Alrighty, today I'm going to be um, just doing another check on my um, air filter. It's been about a year since I last checked it, so just take it out, <clears throat> give it a tap, you know, you get any leaves or anything that's in there out. And uh, I should have done this last year when I um, had this out. Uh, was um, give the mass airflow sensor a clean, so this is the stuff to use. And the filter, last year she was um, all white. And I could tell she didn't need to clean, so it hadn't been not long changed, but she's starting to look a little bit grey now. You can't really tell that in the camera, I don't think. Maybe you can. Let's see what it looks like when I upload it. But, uh, <clears throat> she is starting to get a bit dirty, so I'm going to give her a tap on, the, on a bit of timber or something. Tap her out. I don't have my compressor here at the moment, so I can't give her a blowout. But if I had my compressor, ideally, you'd want to... With low pressure, just give it a blowout of any dust, be better. At the moment, all I've got is just going to give it a few taps, try and get any, try and get any stuff that's in there out, and um, yeah, put it back together. Okay, so first of all, you want to get all these clips off, and your sensor plug off here. Okay, as this is the first time doing this on my Torago, which is a bit slack of me, um, I'll show you in there, so it does have some kind of airflow sensor in there, so I've got the um, mass airflow sensor here, now it looks like uh, it's a setup of two different things, this is um, a VAM and the mass airflow sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. I had to bend these metal parts back a little bit so I can get a socket on there. They turn relatively easily. So um, just one turn on the socket and um, on the wrench, and the rest can be done by hand. And they got one up the front here and another bolt there. So I'm going to take this off right now. Get a bit of a better look at her. Okay, so what we got here <coughs> looks like we've got a little sensor there. It's got a wire inside it. Now I can see it. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see it. So there's a sensor there. Not exactly what I'd call mass airflow sensor, but um, I guess that's what we get with the Tarago Previa. But um, this wouldn't be a complete video if I didn't go to the next step. And this plug here shows only one way out. So I undid it and had a look, and it's definitely got something holding onto it. So I'm not going to pull it any harder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this silicon around the top here and let's have a look inside okay so let's have a look inside this thing together I haven't gotten it open yet <clears throat> sorry about the whispering I just it is midnight and I don't want to wake the neighbors dug out as much silicon as I could. Let's have a look inside here. <clears throat> I think I might have done some damage in there. Most definitely. But um, if I don't do it, who will? I can't find any footage about this type of thing. So someone's got to do it. I 
And so you got the point system there when the van starts. Points close. There's no um no arcing on it by the looks of that, so you probably never ever need cleaning. The spring inside though, like springs in time generally start to give way. So um I'm not really too sure if there'd be a remedy for that. It's probably just a simple replacement. But anyway, my objective was to get to this sensor. So you got two wires going to that sensor there. I'm not gonna dig any further into this. I need to um have a look at what damage I've done there, which I think I'll do that tomorrow, and um, hopefully, hopefully I didn't do too much damage. If it's just a matter of soldering things back together, that's easy done. Okay, well I'm going to close up for tonight and um, continue tomorrow. All right, just see you tomorrow. Okay, continuing from last night, just having a um, close look at this and um, these are the points here that um, when I took the connection out I kind of like um, took the tops of the um, points here off where they were um, tacked onto the circuit board <coughs> and um, it doesn't look uh, too difficult to just touch them up. I can understand why they made it like this. It's, um, they've made it serviceable, so um, <clears throat> if you wanted to replace parts in here, now um, any, I suppose, advanced mechanic that knows what's going on in here would know exactly what he's looking at. Um, but these points here where they solder onto here, if you unsoldered them, you could just take the connection right out. I would have done that on purpose to make it serviceable. And I'll just um, show you what it looks like when I take this plug back out. Okay, so this is the connection here. And you can see there's like a little round part to the bottom of these pins. It's kind of like a, a point contact. And they, I'd say that um, it's a good way to lose screws, isn't it? Take them out now. <clears throat> okay. I'd say that um, originally Toyota made the, this type of same sort of thing without the soldering points, so when you put the plug in, it makes its contact because like, if I do put this in like this, if you can see it right there. When I bolt it in, they pull down. Now that's um, a point contact, so 12 volt passing through there in time would probably um, lose the connection, maybe build up corrosion and so forth. Uh, because it's not a solid connection, it's just a point con contact. And they would have um, added these other points with soldering later on, so you could still take the top off, unsolder those points, pull the plug out, and replace the plug, or service other parts inside, basically to refurbish this part. Now, um, you can see in here, Better lighting. They just. Oh, sorry about this. Just trying to get some better lighting. <clears throat> now you can see the points in the middle. That's a point contact. The outside is where the other parts of the board was, like a tack weld or a um, lightly soldered onto the board. So uh, what I'll be doing is, um, because I don't plan on ever taking this plug back out again, 
I'm going to remove these points here the, where it's soldered, take them off, put the plug back in and solder directly those points to the board. So um, inspecting the rest. If I would, if the sensor, if, if this was a faulty part and I was refurbishing it, and the sensor itself was faulty or something like that, I could probably um, just take this board here out to replace that one sensor. Considering that it's so old now, they wouldn't. They'll just replace the whole part. They wouldn't worry about refurbishing this anymore. But it's um, I'll show you nonetheless since I've gotten this far. So that's the points set up there, and uh, that it's controlling this here. I'm not going to take this any further apart. I'm just going to put that connection back in and solder it back to the board. And uh, I'd like to do that while you're watching, but um, unfortunately I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So uh, I'll show you once I've um, finished doing that. Alright, we'll get to it now. Before I do start desoldering and so forth, I just want to show you, I'm just waiting for the iron to warm up. Uh, see this last pin here. The third one on the right there. You can see how the solder came straight off that pin itself. I didn't have to remove that. And it's uh, a... <clears throat> looks like it's um, either a copper or brass plated with chrome, those last two connections. And uh, the fact that that's the solder has come straight off with the chrome there um, told me that this is probably going to fail at some point. Now, um, if you do have one of these that's faulty uh, and you're watching this video, I'd say probably it wouldn't hurt to um, take that top coat cover off since it's faulty anyway and uh, just make sure that the solder has um, not come away from these points here. That might be all it is. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just um, see if I can sand it back a little bit where the chrome is um, so I can solder straight onto the pins themselves and not have the chrome plating in between with the chance of the chrome plating lifting later on. The plug itself, the connection inside is perfectly fine. <clears throat> I don't understand why there's two brass or two copper that's um, pins there and then the rest of them are chrome plated, I don't know why they did that, why didn't they just make them all the same? Must have some sort of indication for a technician to say alright, first brass, fourth silver or something like that for a, a demo testing or something, I don't know, uh, for the diagnostics. Oh jeez, alright, um, alright I'll get on with it. Okay, so I've got all that soldered in place now, so it's a moment of truth now. Um, plug it onto the van and um, see what happens. I'm not going to plug it onto the van just yet, um, just to go the next step further. Let's have a look what's on the inside, eh? Take the bottom plate off here. Now all the all the electronics are on this side, so I've already done my damage there. So what we've got here, so um, I've read about this part here, and uh, if you get a um, small small drill bit, drill a hole through the top, and the bigger screw, you can pop that out, and there's a screw inside there to adjust it. Now apparently um, by turning this um, clockwise or anti-clockwise you're controlling uh, manually controlling if you're going to run more lean or more rich and um, the only airflow that, that has that I can see is through this hole here passes what's there comes out the back and if you're curious like me you want to know what's happening in there now clearly there's um 
two more screws or three more screws along here that um, is not just the face cover it's holding on to those areas for a particular reason so um, I'm just going to get a full hog on this and um, take the bottom plate off and give you a look at that as well okay so this is the bottom part off nothing too scary I did um, slowly work my way around this plate though just very very slowly work my way around with a very small screwdriver like this one just lifting it a little bit at a time because this plate here is um, like some sort of die cast alloy and um, you bend that a little bit too much you'll snap so just be careful of that and on the inside here this is what you got now this part here that it's, um, I know that there's a screw on the other side there that you can screw, screw this part here in and out so basically it just goes up and down and uh, mine's got a ton of corrosion on it so I'll be cleaning this up but this is this is um, actually really good to know because knowing that you can take this plate off uh, you have to work the silicone off first, clean it all up, then take that off. You can now get in here with a bit of masonry paper or steel wool or something like that and clean it right up properly and not just spraying in there and hoping for the best. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a good clean right now and um, yeah, continue from there. Alright, this is the stuff that um, you're supposed to use for cleaning um, mass airflow sensors. And um, I've been using a um, another um, substance um, like this, uh, but it's for electrical motherboards. Um, you know, you can use them on computer motherboards, mobile phones, whatever. And it's a contact cleaner. Exactly the same stuff. You can see on there how it's wet, and if I just blow it that. So it all just evaporates. The contact cleaner is exactly the same stuff. It smells the same, acts the same. I can't see reason, any reason why I think it's any different. So um, that's just a yeah something to think of. If you've already got contact cleaner for your motherboard or something, you can use the same stuff. Uh, it, it, like I said, I use both, and um, they both smell the same. They both act the same like spray a surface area and then not long after it like, evaporates before your eyes basically alright so I've cleaned it up the best I can it still looks a bit grotty in there but it's um it's not that bad actually I um took to it with um distilled water and uh some toothpaste and a toothbrush to clean these um, rough areas up, making sure I kept clear from this area here. I didn't want to get any water in near that sensor there, and I use distilled water because uh, normal water has um, chlorine and things in it that can cause corrosion, and uh, don't need any of that. Um, about as best as I'm going to clean it. It's I'm not happy with it uh, being like that. Uh, there's no way of me cleaning it any more than that though. I did the best I can with a toothbrush and some toothpaste, distilled water, cleaned up the back area there, blasted it with uh, <coughs> the mass airflow sensor cleaner just to rinse it off after I, I rinsed it off with the distilled water first and then I gave it another rinse off with the mass airflow just to get rid of any other residue that might be there. Clean up the plate as well. So basically, it's just bolting it back down now, or screwing it back down if you wish. Getting silicon back around the edges on both sides, putting it back in the van. So I'll do that. It's all back together now. And uh, if you want to know how one of these things work, you now know. But um, all anybody ever needs to do is um, just spray that sensor there. 
don't need to pull it all apart like I did and um, go so deep into it. Just need to take the top off, spray that sensor there. Um, a bit hard to clean because the hole was right at the top of that section there, or right at the bottom, depending on which way you want to look at it. <clears throat> the side that's closest to the aluminium is um, or aluminium, if you wish. Alright, I'll put it back on and um, moment of truth, eh? There is uh, one more thing I'd like to include with this. Is um, <coughs> okay. One last thing I'd like to include with this. Uh, when I started this, this is my first time to clean the mass airflow sensor on the Tarago. And um, like most of my videos, first time I've done anything on a Tarago. <clears throat> so it's kind of like a learning curve for you for me at the same time. And it's good to make the mistakes with you guys. So that way you can see when I make a mistake and you know not to make that same mistake yourself. Um, <coughs> as you saw, I went a lot further into this than I needed to. Um, but it's good. I know now what all that looks like inside. And... Um, that's the type of person I am. I like to know how things work and how things function, what they look like. I won't ever be asking, you know, has anybody ever pulled one apart? Because I've done it. But uh, I was kind of expecting the sensor to be something more of a, <coughs> like my older cars, more of a sensor that was probably about yay long, you take it out, and you can actually clean a couple of wires or a coil or something that manages the airflow. I mean, like, I don't know how that little sensor there does anything at all but it does <coughs> now because I didn't know what I was look expecting I went as far as to take this guy here off and uh, this has a little bit of an adjustment on it um, as far as I could tell, when I had this off, the van wouldn't idle with that off. And uh, when I put it back on, um, it uh, like I could adjust it a little bit to the point where the van wouldn't idle and the van would idle. Uh, and if I turn it too far, the van would rev a little bit, like one, one and a half thousand revs. So uh, to adjust this back to how I would expect it to run is uh, I let the van warm up uh, to got te got to temperature, and I know that the van runs at about 800,000 revs when she's idle. That's normal. So knowing that, I put this back on and then I adjusted it to the van was doing 8,000 revs again at idle, and then screwed it back on. So um, this is nothing to do with the airflow sensor, uh, but because it looked more like what I'm used to, I thought they must have put it up the wrong end, well not the wrong end but just done it differently and um, that's not the case and I followed the hose right through and there is no other electrical points anywhere along the intake apart from the uh, air filter itself and that's that's the only um, airflow control that's on the van and um, so that's pretty much it now, I guess. Uh, so I've answered all questions and above, I guess. So um, thanks for watching. It's, um, it's great that um, I've got uh, quite a few um, subscribers. So um, thanks again for watching about that. More to the point, I'm happy, happy with the comments that I get. 
um, for making the videos that I make on the Tarragos and um, how much help that is to others. Okay, so uh, I've got the filter out and uh, just what, so I can show you, there is a clip at the back that I couldn't show you before with everything clipped in place. So there's four clips, one, three, four. And uh, I'll take the sensor out now, which is like two screws up top here. 